student. I'm Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. First of all, thank you so much for joining me. If you are watching live, let me know here in the chat. If you are watching the replay, thank you so much. I hope this lesson is helpful to you. I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned some interesting strategies that will help you improve your pronunciation and intonation in English. And hey, Instagram, thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about pronunciation and intonation in English because, yes, this is something we need to work on, okay? So, anyway, my friends, tonight we talk about pronunciation and intonation. So, if you are on Instagram, I have these slides here on YouTube, okay? And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I know that more than 50% of people who watch, like, share are not subscribed yet. Anyway, my friends, pronunciation and intonation in English. Just as listening skills are important, reading skills are important, speaking skills, grammar, vocabulary, well, pronunciation and intonation are important and we need to dedicate some time to pronunciation and intonation, okay? Now, in tonight's lesson, I'm going to be giving you some strategies. I'm going to be telling you a few things that you should be doing if you want to improve your pronunciation, okay? If you want to improve your intonation and speak English more clearly, okay? Now, one important thing that I need to tell you right off the bat, right off the bat is an expression, okay? Right at the beginning, right off the bat. We're never going to be native speakers. <laughs> I'm doing therapy. I haven't gotten over that. But that's the truth. We're never going to be like native speakers. We are always going to be uh, working on something. If I stop working on my pronunciation and intonation, I will forget. So this should be a continuous work. You should be constantly working on your pronunciation and intonation because we're not native speakers, okay? If I compare myself to 10 years ago, 15 years ago when I started studying, oh, I'm much better. But if I stop and never do anything again, I will go back to what I was because we forget. It's not our native language. Even in my own language, I confuse things, let alone in English, okay? Now, practice a little but with consistency. I guess that the biggest problem students have is with consistency, you know? This is something that I have been able to identify by uh, teaching my students from all over the world. I have been teaching English for more than 15 years. And one thing I noticed was this, the lack of consistency. And the problems are, are very, very common. They start working on pronunciation. And they do a lot. They study a lot. But for a very short period of time. Maybe a month. Maybe two months. But after a few weeks, a few months, they stop. They quit. They don't try it anymore because for many reasons, okay? I'm not going to point out the reasons why people stop. There are many reasons. Some may be connected to English, some may be connected to their personal lives, emotions, things that are happening in their lives at the moment. But for many different reasons, students do a lot over a short period of time, but after a few months, they quit. They let it go. They go on frozen mode. Elsa, let it go. Let it go. Don't do that. Don't let it go. So if you are trying to improve your pronunciation, if you are trying to become uh, a speaker who can communicate more clearly, who can be understood by others, do a little. You don't need to do a lot, but do it every day. Well, not necessarily every day, but consistently. So if you are trying to improve your pronunciation, and I think that this is something that many, if not all, 
but many English learners should do is to study pronunciation and intonation. So if you study three times a week, let's say you can only study three times a week. That's okay. How often do you study English? People on Instagram, tell me here in the chat. Do you study every day? Do you study on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturday, Saturday night? <laughs> of course not. And people on YouTube, how often do you study English? Do you study English every day? Do you study English uh, once a week? I see some baby sardines here. Tell me, my babies, you should be studying a lot because I'm giving a lot of work. <laughs> A lot of challenges, a lot of things for you guys to do. So tell me, what is your frequency? What is your magic number? Is it once a week? Is it once a day? Maybe you have time. But throughout the week and throughout the, the, the study routine you have established, you need to include a little bit of pronunciation. And you can do simple exercises. I'm going to be giving you some suggestions here. You don't need to complicate. If you are consistent with your practice, if you dedicate yourself to the language and study a little bit, you are going to be able to get incredible results. So I see some people saying four times a week, every day, on my free time, during my free time, twice a week. Uh, okay, okay. Some people say um, every day, a little every day. So a little goes a long way. Don't be fooled that you need to study a lot to get better results. And this is going to be a subject for another lesson, but when you are thinking of your study practice, you need to find ways to combine different activities because we need to save time. Not everybody can study every day. So whenever you do study, you need to think smart and try to combine different activities so that you can be more productive. So for example, in my case, when I'm studying English or when I am studying Italian, on the reading day, I practice pronunciation and intonation. So I'm not just practicing reading and reading comprehension. I am also practicing pronunciation and intonation. So find ways to combine different exercises so that you can save time and, uh, and, and, and you can be, a, a, um, excuse me, a consistent person. So save time and be consistent. That's the key. So my first tip here, do a little. I'm, I'm, I'm all good with little. As long as you do a little consistently every week for the past two months. Yes, for the past two months, I've been very busy. I've been working a lot. So I am studying Italian, I'm studying three times a week, sometimes twice. I'm, I've been very busy, but I'm still very consistent with my practice. Whenever I sit down to study, which is twice or three times a week, I really do the exercises I, I have committed to. Okay, and I am consistent with my pronunciation and intonation practice. And when I sit down to study English and, and, and practice vocabulary and practice pronunciation, I am also very consistent. I don't spend long hours studying, but I am consistent with my practice because consistency is much more important than the quantity uh, of things you study or the length of time you study. Okay, moving on. Oh, this is a, a very important tip when we are, and this is for the exercise time. Okay. So this tip is important, but only when you are studying, when you are practicing, not when you are talking to people, <laughs> when you sit down to practice pronunciation and intonation, exaggerate the sounds. Okay. Open your mouth. Imagine you are singing opera. Figaro, 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 exaggerate, okay? Open your mouth because you are practicing. Don't be shy, okay? So if you pay attention to me now, I am really emphasizing, overstressing the sound so that you can understand me very clearly and easily. Of course, I don't talk like that. People don't talk like that. This is practice time. So when you're doing practice time, open your mouth. Don't be afraid. I sometimes, <laughs> this happens a lot when I'm teaching students to, to make the, the TH sound, the th or the th. And they are shy. 
They are afraid. Uh, they are afraid. They feel uncomfortable opening, opening their mouth and 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 making the movement. They feel a little embarrassed. Don't feel embarrassed. You are only going to learn to pronounce words correctly if you exaggerate the movement and the sound. Okay, speak up. Don't be afraid. It's practice time. If you are shy, you don't need to do this in front of people like I am doing right now. You can do it alone, in your room, studying by yourself. But when you do that and you are learning TH sound or you're learning the ED sounds or you are practicing difficult consonant sounds like the B, the V, the D, the G, you know, when you're practicing sounds, it is important to exaggerate. That's why I like to combine some kinds of exercises that I'm going to talk to you guys about. So when you sit down to practice, you really need to exaggerate. Another important thing, when you're practicing pronunciation, do not speak fast. That's not the goal here. Actually, you should, you should forget the word fast when it comes to speaking, not learning, but speaking. You don't need to speak fast to speak well. You don't need to speak fast to be considered a fluent speaker. That is BS, bullshit, okay? You don't need to do that. I love speaking at normal speed because I want to talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. I want to be able to be clear to as many people as possible. I am a communicator. That's who I am. So, especially when you're practicing, do not speak too fast, because if you speak too fast, you will not be able to make certain movements, okay? Lips, tongue, it'll be difficult, especially because you haven't mastered the sound. If you haven't mastered the sound, it's probably because you haven't mastered the movements. If you speak fast, you won't be able to make the movements properly, correctly. That's why when you sit down to practice, you have to speak slowly. You have to repeat the words slowly. In English, the words are divided by syllables too, okay? That are syllables. Pronounce the syllables slowly, okay? So that is important. Otherwise, you are never going to learn the sound you're studying correctly because you're always trying to do it too quickly. As you learn and become more comfortable making that sound, then you can speed up, okay? But not when you're learning certain sounds, not when you're studying. And here, depending on on how often you study, you can decide on different kinds of exercises that are different exercises, that are exercises when you speak a little faster, that are exercises when you speak a little slower, okay, more slowly. Why? Why is that important? Because we are working on different things. So whenever you sit down to study, to learn sounds, to improve pronunciation of difficult sounds, because English has some difficult sounds, slowly, okay? And exaggerate, movements, move your mouth, your tongue. Don't be shy, because if you are shy and you just to speak like this, you're not going to improve it. I'm, I'm sorry. Open your mouth, okay? It is important. And you are going to thank me later. Maybe one day. <laughs> Tell me, guys, here in the comments, how often do you practice pronunciation and intonation? How often do you sit down to focus on learning the pronunciation of words, learning the, the sounds, checking the words, and learning how to speak them correctly. Let me know here in the chat. Ta -da. Moving on. Now, this is a, a very good exercise. I really like it. Read aloud, okay? I don't have paper. I don't have a book here with me. But, okay, basically you can go on Google and you can try to find an article, a text, something for you to read. It would be better if you found um, an audio, uh, 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 an article that contains the audio, because then you can listen. We're going to talk about that. But here I'm talking about reading, okay? And here on my screen, you can see a website recommendation. The website is dictation.io speech. And 
this website is basically um, a website where I click record and I read something or I say something and then the machine is going to type what I'm saying. This is going to help you get a better idea of what mistakes you are making and then you can check the pronunciation of that word. And I've tried, I've used this many, many times and it's very, very, very good. Okay, really, really good. I use this to study actually. And whenever I sit down and I practice reading, I love using some, me, teacher pricks, okay? I love using some New York Times uh, articles. They have really good language for my level remember that okay uh, they're a little longer so think about that there are other websites that will be more appropriate to your level but I, I love checking the news and finding some interesting and complex text so that I can read aloud and I use this website to see if my pronunciation and intonation are clear dictation.io slash speech okay now, and the, the good thing about this, this website is that it's not perfect, okay? It's not 100% accurate, but it does help a lot. So I, I, I read the text and then I check the kinds of words that, are, that the, the machine is, can't understand, okay? And this happens. And then what I do is when I check the, uh, the word that the machine didn't understand, I practice pronouncing that word alone, if the machine still doesn't understand, then I check the phonetics so that I can see what mistake I am making. And then I go back and I practice again. So see, this is a very good website to work on pronunciation and intonation because if you use the wrong intonation as well, it is going to spot the mistake you're making. It's not gonna tell you the mistake you're making. It's a simple website. You speak, the machine types. Okay, but I think it is a very efficient way for you to practice reading aloud because it is going to show you many mistakes you're probably making because I have found a lot of mistakes that I make and it's very useful because it shows me the kinds of mistakes that I'm making because of the words that it types incorrectly. Now, as I told you, it's artificial intelligence. It's not perfect. There will be moments when the machine will not understand especially if you speak too fast. So when I'm reading, I try not to read too fast, otherwise the machine is not gonna catch some phrases. So I speak at normal to slow speed so that the machine can understand. So this is a reading exercise where I can speak, I read aloud, um, uh, I read the text aloud, and as the machine types, it's going to type some words incorrectly. Then. After I finish, I check the words it typed incorrectly. I check the pronunciation of those words. Then I repeat those words individually. And I check, okay, was it because I spoke too fast and then the machine didn't understand? Or was I making a pronunciation mistake? Maybe I was stressing the wrong syllable because this may happen. So here, it is a very interesting practice. And you can try to do that when you are practicing your reading activities. Because I imagine that you practice reading. Because if you know me, if you know my channel, I always tell you guys to practice different kinds of activities, okay? So this is very important, all right, my friends? Keep that in mind. So after the video is over, I will send you the links. I will post the links in the comments of the video on YouTube. I will try to post here on Instagram as well. Instagram is a little bit trickier, but I know that on YouTube, I can post the links to to the websites I'm going to recommend, okay? Because I think I have one more, no, two more recommendations of websites you can use. They are free websites, okay, that are paid areas and versions, but through the free versions, you can already do a lot and work on your English and improve your pronunciation and intonation. And here, keep in mind that if you have a bad intonation, the machine is not going to understand either. And I guess that for people who speak too fast, because they, they they naturally speak fast this is going to be a good exercise because the machine is not so smart so if you speak too fast the machine is not going to catch what you're saying so you have to be more slowly and speak more slowly uh read more slowly otherwise the machine is not going to catch what you're saying Okay, and even when it does, it may spot some mistakes. Now, the mistakes, as I explained, may be uh, for two different reasons. Your pronunciation or intonation, or because the machine didn't catch 
this happens okay so don't be sad if the machine doesn't understand things you say it's because of both reasons or your pronunciation and intonation are not on point or the machine didn't understand it happens okay moving on and hey Send me love, send me some hearts if you are enjoying this lesson. You really support the channel by liking the video and by sharing the video. You can share on Instagram too, send a direct. I, I don't know how you can do this, but you can do this. You know, when you share the lesson with your friends, you help the channel grow, but you also help other people find this information more easily because then the machines on YouTube, the robots understand that Teacher Pricks is cool and then YouTube helps Teacher Pricks. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, my friends. Vowel and consonant sounds. Important. Now, you need on uh, throughout the week when you study, I don't know if it's every day. You don't need to do this every day because it is actually a bit tiring, okay? You can do this maybe uh, once a week or twice a week. You can study the vowel and the consonant sounds individually. You need to learn the different vowel sounds that are. You need to learn the different consonant sounds, the different combinations, okay? So this takes a little bit of time. And uh, if, you, if you go on Google, you, this, you can easily find this on Google. You can find this chart here on, on, on YouTube. I'm showing a chart of uh, phonetic symbols. Do you need to learn the phonetic symbols? No, absolutely not. You don't need to learn, okay? I'm showing you this as a teacher because I am a teacher. I study phonetics, but when I say you study the consonant sounds and the vowel sounds, I'm talking about a more practical way, listening and repeating. I'm not saying that you need to learn how to draw the sounds, memorize the, 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 the symbols. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. I need to do that. Ah, cool. <laughs> but you need to study the sounds. So learning the vowel sounds. If you go on, on YouTube and you type, uh, oh, I want to learn the vowel sounds in English, the consonant sounds in English, the different consonant sounds in English. This is a good exercise, okay? In, in some of these videos, and I have talked about this before, here on YouTube, Rachel's English. She's a teacher, she's amazing. She has many pronunciation videos. Actually, her channel focuses on pronunciation and intonation, okay? There are many kinds of YouTube channels here. I don't often recommend channels, but her channel is perfection, okay? Her channel is great if you are trying to work on pronunciation and intonation because she really focuses her time and energy creating pronunciation and intonation videos. So this would be a good source, a good free source here on YouTube for you to study pronunciation and intonation, more specifically pronunciation. So learning the vowel sounds, spending some time learning words with the specific vowel sounds you're studying. This is helpful. And again, a little every week. You don't need to spend one, two hours doing that because it is tiring, okay? So we spend a little time, if possible, every week, consistently. You are not going to notice results after one month doing this exercise. It is about a consistent period of time. And then you will be able to notice changes, consistent changes. It's about practicing consistently. So learning the vowel and the consonant sounds can be very helpful, okay? Moving on. Shadowing. Oh, I love this exercise. Shadowing. I love shadowing. I do shadowing every week. Practice the art of imitation. And here I have another website recommendation. Oh, did I have a website recommendation? Oh, yes. Uh, for vowels and consonant sounds, I will leave another link to a website recommendation, okay? And uh, I don't know how to pronounce this website, pronunciation, I, I, I don't know, but it's P-R-O-N-U-N-C-I-A-N.com, pronunciation, P-R-O-N-U-N-C-I-A-N, okay? And uh, on that website, they have the sounds of the vowels and the consonant sounds, everything is there and they show some words with those sounds. So it is a very good website because it's it brings everything in one place, okay? 
So you can check, I will leave the link after the video is over so that you can check this website as well to include on your uh, study practice, on your routine to study pronunciation and intonation, okay? Now, moving on, going back to shadowing. The art of imitation, okay? At first, guys, uh, and I've talked a lot to a lot of students about shadowing, and many of them tell me that it's so weird. Oh my God, teacher, it's so strange to do shadowing. I feel uncomfortable, and I agree with you. It is a little bit uncomfortable. So it will not feel natural at first. At first, you will feel stupid, you will feel weird, you will feel like that is not for you. But practicing shadowing helps you hear and practice how the pitches change, how the rhythm changes. And this will help you work on your muscle memory. I'm not with shadowing, keep that in mind. With shadowing, I am not teaching you theory. I'm not teaching you movements. I'm not teaching you any of that. I'm teaching you muscle memory because I'm watching someone speaking and I'm trying to imitate what they're doing and with the repetition by listening to the speaker and constantly trying to repeat what they say I'm practicing and I'm working on a different way of improving my pronunciation and intonation this is actually the best exercise in my opinion okay this is the best exercise for you to work on pronunciation and intonation especially because you're right there repeating after the speaker shadowing is um there are many ways for you to do shadowing but the best way would be to practice um repeating after the speaker without pausing so the speaker says something and you're there trying to follow along that's why you need the transcript okay this doesn't work with all kinds of videos or audios if you don't have a script the transcript it is difficult to follow along so on youtube if you try to find videos filter the videos to short videos what is a short video up to up to four minutes, short. More than four minutes, it gets a little bit tiring to do shadowing, okay? It gets a little bit uh, tiring and the audio is too long, so it's difficult, okay? So up to four minutes and if you're finding, if you're looking for videos on YouTube, videos that have subtitle, okay? If the video doesn't have subtitles, it'll be difficult for you to read along, to practice. So I hit play here. Let's say you are using my videos, okay? You hit play, you have to go as fast as I go, you have to follow the speed, okay? You have to follow my speed. If I rise my voice, you have to rise your voice. If I ask a question and I rise my intonation, you have to rise. If my intonation falls, your intonation falls, okay? If I stress a word, you have to stress that word. You follow the intonation. You follow what the speaker is saying the same way. So, you know, when I'm watching Friends, I simp because I, I have... How am I going to put this? I'm more skilled. This exercise is easier for me. So whenever I'm watching friends, I sometimes practice shadowing. Uh, there is a little bit of delay because I don't use subtitles. So I listen to what Rachel is saying or Roz or Monica, and I try to follow the same intonation. We were on the break. And I try to imitate. What? No way. And I try some sentences. Why? Because I'm practicing. I'm trying to sound the same way. And there's no better exercise to help you improve intonation. When they ask a question, I try to imitate and follow the same, the same pitch, the same, if they rise, I follow the same thing. So this is an incredible practice. Now, doing that with TV series can be a little bit more difficult, especially because the TV series, uh, the episodes are long. When I do that uh, by watching Friends, I do not do it during all the episode. Actually, that is not what I do. I choose some scenes that are, in my opinion, important, that I like, and then I try 
to repeat what they are saying. So I do not follow, uh, I do not do this throughout the entire episode as it's too hard. Again, as I said, practice with short audios, short videos, and practice the intonation. I like to use videos because then I get to see the person and I try to pay attention to their uh, facial expressions. So um, when they're angry or when they're happy or when they're excited or when they're surprised, I like to, to check their facial expression because that also helps me improve my intonation. So this is by far one of the best and easiest exercises you can do to work on your intonation skills. Again, as I said, this does not help you learn the right movements, okay? Because if you pay attention to Americans, especially Americans, I'm not focusing on other nationalities here. I'm not talking about British people, Canadian people, no, Americans, okay? Let's focus on America. They don't open their mouths so much because they have mastered the language. Let's make that very clear, okay? Uh, they, because they do not open their mouth so much, if you are trying to learn pronunciation and intonation by listening to native speakers, just listening to them will not help you learn how to make the right movement because the movements are very subtle, very subtle. So that's why shadowing will not help you learn the movements. It is more, it's more intuitive, okay? So you learn here, but you just listen. And this is a very good exercise. Why do babies learn and improve their pronunciation so much? Well, because through, since they were tiny little babies, so cute, they were listening. They didn't learn theory. Well, they had to learn at some point, but for pronunciation purposes, okay? I'm not talking about other aspects of the language because as I've always as I've already talked about, we don't learn the same way babies do. But there are some strategies that we can adopt on the way babies learn. But again, big disclaimer, I like to make this very big disclaimer. We do not learn the same way babies do because our brain is different. The way we process information, the way we interact with the world is different. Therefore, we do not learn the same way. However, there are elements that I can adopt from the way babies learn. That are strategies, strategies that we notice in the way babies interact with the world that we can adopt, that we can try to use. So they don't, as when they become adults, why do they do not open their mouth so much? They have learned the sounds over and over and over and over. It's not like us. We haven't spent the same amount of hours learning, studying the same way. But there are things we can definitely adopt. So concluding here, shadowing does not teach you um, does not teach you the, the theory, how to open your mouth, how to position the tongue. No, it doesn't teach you that. It doesn't teach you the different vowel sounds. It doesn't teach you the different consonant sounds. It doesn't teach you how to stress words. No, it's all intuitive because you're listening in action, live, okay? But it is a very good practice. It is a practice that in my, uh, in my online program, the Real English Academy, every lesson I tell my, my baby sardines, my students, my babies to practice shadowing. They have a listening exercise, they have the transcript, they have the audio. So I tell them, babies, every time you're doing the listening, you have to practice shadowing. As soon as you finish the exercise, practice shadowing, practice aloud, open your mouth, exaggerate the movements, because that's how you're going to learn, okay? Oops, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Common mistakes. Now here, there are six mistakes that are, I believe are super common. The first one, overstressed word endings. And what is this? This happens a lot to Latin uh, people, okay? People from Spain, from Brazil, from Chile, from Uruguay, let's see where else. There are some other countries too, uh, out, uh, outside South America and Latin America. So you overstress word endings. So instead of saying like, like, 
People say likey. I don't even like to say that. <laughs> that or thaty. Ooh. I don't like doing that. So I'm not going to focus on that, okay? But that's basically what I'm saying. Pre over stressing the last vowel or the last consonant sound, okay? So be careful with these exaggerations. You don't emphasize the word endings if it's not necessary. If there is a sound to be made, you need to learn the correct sound. The last, uh, the last letter of the words are not always pronounced, okay? You need to, that's when checking the phonetic symbols will help you because it shows you where the pronunciation ends, okay? So, the last letter of a word may not always be pronounced. And if there is a pronunciation for that last word, make sure to check how to pronounce that last word, last letter. That's why using dictionaries when you're studying pronunciation is very helpful. So if you are not sure on how to pronounce that last part of the word, check an online dictionary today. Most, if not all, dictionaries online show you how to pronounce the words. Okay? Awesome. Now, second mistake, and I have videos talking about this. Actually, I have videos talking about uh, all of them. Pronouncing silent letters, okay? Like listen. Some people say listen. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. No. No, 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 no. Listen. Muscle. Not muscle. M so there are some letters in English that are silent. We don't pronounce them. However, some students tend to pronounce those letters. It is a very common pronunciation mistake. Confusing vowel sounds. Guys, this number three, I make this mistake, okay? Confusing the vowel sounds because, as I said, as much as I study, I've been studying for more than 15 years, even though I am really, really good at what I do, I still make mistakes and I will probably make mistakes until the day I die and I will die in English. <laughs> The day I get to heaven and God starts talking to me, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be like, hey, in English, no Portuguese, please. But Priscilla, you were born in Brazil. I'm like, no, English. I'm not staying here if you don't speak. <laughs> please, God, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> but I'm serious, you know, I even dream in English. My dreams are in English. I think in English. So if I die and I meet God, I want to be talking in English. I'm going to be like, dude, English. Come on. Okay. I like Italian, but my favorite language is English. Uh, um, my, my, it's like here, English. I like Italian very much. But when I, when I, when I die, I, I want to die in English, you know, <laughs> if that's even possible. Anyway, confusing vowel sounds happens, okay? It happens to everybody. So, it needs constant work, okay? So, I'm always practicing learning, learning vowel sounds. I'm always reviewing learning vowel sounds because I know that it is very confusing, okay? So, always practice studying vowel sounds, okay? Every week, I'm always checking sounds, because I know we make mistakes when it comes to vowel sounds. Uh, if I compare English to Portuguese, that I, I think there's so many vowel sounds that don't exist in Portuguese, but exist in English. So there are sounds that I never learned when I was a child. So I need constant work, okay? Uh, consonant sounds, this is also a problem for many English learners, okay? So constant, it's the same thing with vowels. In my personal opinion, I believe the consonant vowels are easier than the vowel sounds, okay? Uh, the consonant sounds are easier. In my opinion, for me, teacher pricks, you will need to check it to, for yourself. So, but, uh, but at the end of the day, there are still mistakes people make with consonant sounds. T, V, B, M, N, L, Y. Some people make many mistakes with Y. The letter R, the different sounds of R. 
the H sound. There are mistakes with these consonants, okay? People from Italy, they have a big problem with the H, okay? Some, uh, for example, H as in house, okay? Sometimes they mispronounce these words that have this sound because it's not common for them, okay? So consonant sounds can be challenging. It depends on where you are from. For Asian, for Asian people, Arabic people, the B, the V, they're difficult sounds as well. The J sound can be very difficult for them as well. The J sound, it can be difficult, okay? So study them. Number five, the TH sounds are difficult. And here on my channel, I have, um, I'm pretty sure I have videos talking about the TH sound and giving you the strategy behind how to make the movement, how to position your tongue, okay? And then make the sounds. Here, if you, uh, are, if you study, as, as many of you have told me, oh, I study every week. Okay, awesome. So check these six mistakes. Google exercises that you can do. T8 sound exercises. Consonant sounds. Vowel sounds. Study the vowel sounds. And here, number six, stressing the wrong words in a sentence. This is more connected to pronunciation. Excuse me. This is more connected to intonation. In English, when we make a sentence, we have to stress, to emphasize specific words and sometimes the students don't know how to do that now with shadowing you are going to fix this mistake because in conversations if you practice shadowing consistently you will be working on correcting the stressing in a phrase in a sentence so this is practice if there is one kind of exercise that uh, will pay off is being consistent with pronunciation and intonation practice because it's pretty much the only way for you to improve to speak more clearly in english in conversations because you may you you will never talk like a native speaker don't don't feel that way but you will and this is for sure you will speak clearly People will understand you. You will feel more comfortable with your pronunciation, with your accent, with your accent, with your intonation. This can be done, okay? This is something that you can definitely do no matter what your level is. Pronunciation is something, pronunciation, pronunciation and intonation are two things that I work with my students from day one, from basic level. So this is something that you, if you didn't do when you were a beginner, you have a lot to catch up, okay? So do that. Practice. Because this is ongoing. This is uh, continuous work, okay? Other than that, my friends, do you have pronunciation questions? So I will finish the video now. I will come back here in the comments and post the links of the website, recommendations on YouTube. And if you have pronunciation questions, I can, uh, about specific words or specific sounds, let me know in the comments, not in the chat, in the comments of this video. And then I can create uh, specific videos to talk about specific sounds of words or of vowels or consonants in English, okay? Other than that, have a lovely day or a lovely night. Let me say goodbye to Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Come to YouTube, subscribe, and check the recommendations of the websites that I've talked about in this lesson. Thank you. Bye. And now, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Share this lesson with your friends. Subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.